which will be uh, given by Carlos Leandro from Ocean Pact. Carlos uh, has a, a bachelor in oceanography from the State University of Rio de Janeiro and a master in remote sensing applied to oceanography from uh, the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research, which is INPE. Regarding his professional experience, he was a university uh, level specialist in the hydrobiology laboratory of the Federal University of Maranhão. Uh, then um, between 1989 and 1996, he worked as an employee in the remote sensing, sensing division of uh, INPE. Then uh, he moved uh, he moved on in, from 1997 to 2003. He was the CEO of OceanSat, Space Technology for Environmental Monitoring, and Marketing Director of OceanSat also. And finally, between 2006 and 2018, he was a Partner Director of Ambi Petro Survey and Innovation. Currently, he's co coordinating the Kronos project, which is a platform that integrates meteo oceanographic data from different sources as ocean packed maritime uh, services. Uh, please, Carlos, go ahead with your presentation. Carlos, please uh, activate oh, your. Hello. Oh, yeah. 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 okay. 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 Okay, guys. Uh, thank you for your invitation, and it's a very nice for me to participate in a high level uh, event like that. You know, I I, I learned a lot about uh, uh, many issues about the uh, offshore wind farm. Now we will talk about the mid ocean you know, and all the application. You know. The talk up, yeah, you show I'll share my screen, okay. Everybody see my okay, it's coming just a minute, yeah, yes, fine, okay. Then the, the presentation that's ready to support planning, installation, maintenance, uh, of course, or maintenance and the operation of offshore wind farms, okay. And this is uh, an index, okay. Yeah, I talk about let uh, quickly in introduction life phase of the offshore wind farms influence of metocean variables in these activities with the measurement system like ladders and uh, the, the main system monitoring system for wind with float lidar and I talk about the expertise of the ocean pact group in terms of uh, all it all item to support the wind uh, offshore wind farm. Okay, introduction <laughs> for project the wind farms in Brazil is exclusively economic zone. It's very important, necessary to support the uh, metocean information. The companies help, in the case of companies, we help uh, to choose the, the, the more suitable area. The, pro the projects in support are choosing the best technology materials in size of the wind farm, the dimension of wind farm. In the Brazil authorities, to, to, to allow companies and energy actions in, in the future, because we know the need, we need three years to continue of the wind data in the ocean to have a, a, a good place to be really operate and install the wind far, uh, offshore wind farm. The mid ocean data is largely used in Europe, support assessment wind power generation potential, of course, and, and also. In the US, the metocean data recommended by Bessie and the Boeing, okay, and as a basic stage of the strategic assessment of the offshore wind investment. The metocean characterization recommend practices for US offshore wind energy uh, has the normals, norms and the parameters required by this institution for any analysis, uh, whether uh, strategy, uh, operational, and envi or environment. Or, or, or it, in, in other words, we cover all the information, all the phases of this. 
this life cycles phase of the offshore wind farms and the influence of metocean variables in, in its activities. Uh, and important to consider in the following metallurgical phenomena is the several phases of the wind farms. Okay, uh, we we wind speed it's wind shear on the turbine structure. People talk about a lot about this. Uh, low level jets here in, uh, in our figure here like that. Okay, ocean currents and the, by the for uh, by wind and by tide, of course, in the area, the principal and not just not just of Brazil. I talk about a little bit about that. Local tide, the low level, the high level in terms of the, the water level, and uh, local waves characteristics in such as seasonal and diurnal variation, uh, sea temperature and salinity uh, variation along the water column and as well the inter interaction between this condition. Of course, we need to consider all this information, integrate this information, these variables. And of course, surface and subsurface characteristics of the seafloor, because we need to install or directly in the sea, in the seabed or the seafloor, or you need to anchor the system over there. Well, uh, the life cycle phase of the offshore wind project are planning, one, two years, continuous. Yeah? Then in that phase, you have you need to obtain the environment permit. Uh, the, the colleague from Obama talked about that. And design, five to eight years. Transport and installation, one and three years. Uh, operation and maintenance, two years to plus, of course, and in the end, this commission. One day we need to consider taking out everything from the ocean or not, yeah, depending on the situation, depending on the design, depending on many questions. And the planning to continue, the planning phase include the early stage of the product development process, including initial identification of the place, the, the region, the area, conceptual design, site assessment and permitting, of course, uh, you need to, to permit to, to continue to operate. In case of wind, you have the statistic, of course, minimum mean, means standard deviation, maximum and uh, distribution in terms of velocity, wind direction, of course, also wind profile, wind shear, turbulence, people talk about a lot this, developer reliable power output curves, that's fundamental. The determination of the wake effect and the assessment of overall wind facility performance, including project loads. Planning, yeah, uh, you, you, you need to consider also the current and the waves. Yeah? In that case, I show the AGF radar data from the uh, campus basin, okay? And of course, uh, wave watch uh, tree, uh, wave model, and buoy to create. To, to try to, to, to fix it yeah, in terms of you have a good measurement and you have a good prediction in terms of waves, okay? The planning continue, then you have to consider also the light frequency, it's very important. Uh, hay and rain, especially the, the strong one, okay? Because this can impact in your, your offshore wind farm for long term, okay? in terms of fatigue of the material also. Uh, in terms of feasibility assessment and conceptual design, you need to consider uh, a delicacy the wind source, uh, RC, uh, RRC, RRC, uh, water temperature, the bathymetry and site survey of the region, uh, wave condition, current water level, and extreme condition, of course. Permit and environment impact analysis. In the baseline phase, we will to carry that different information needed to prepare the environmental report, okay? Besides the biological and socioeconomic aspect, metoshi for me, is crucial <coughs> at this stage. Besides the local depth, uh, which is very important for wind turbine design, the rest of the process is controlled by metoshi condition, as well the condition that can be influenced in the wind, by the wind turbines and the other components of the offshore wind. Like, for example, wake effect. People talk about the sino, just talk about a little bit about this, but I just to, 
I put this uh, just, you know, to consider this kind of effect on the turbine. Then we need to have a, a we need to have a good wind data measurement and prediction also. Okay, and I, I separate this this slide because I recently uh, I see this this uh, this uh, 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 this operation. The people in the South China Sea. To use the dynamic cable is necessary to match the requirement bit, uh, operation the 70 class typhoon condition okay the, the the extreme weather condition is we need to consider this when you talk about when the design of your uh, your offshore wind farm exactly I talk about before a normal condition, extreme condition. We need to consider this definitely in our operation. I put two, two, two pictures here, one from my wife, because she has opportunity to, to visit the Block Island, United States. And the another one is the guy, Dennis yeah, Shorty, the our colleague. And in terms of design, one we need to consider, uh, of course, uh, the the shallow or deep water embankment. Uh, in, in that case, uh, we use this figure from Ibama to show exactly what's happened when you stay in the shallow water embankment. Uh, the concept model in this area, for example, northeast of Brazil in the coast of Higra North Coast, you can see the, for example, the, the current of, of the longshore current here in green one, the tide, current in this, this yellow one, and, and the, the, the red is the North uh, Brazil current, okay? That's important, why? Because the sediment transport in shallow water is very, very important to, to dimension it. I, 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 I took this picture from the Landsat image in the, in the London, and you can see the, the wakes of the turbine, yeah, because exactly because it's shallow water and because the, the a lot of sediment in the region then when you when you consider to install all the the offshore wind farms in northeast of brazil the people will need to consider this in the design uh, phase okay transportation installation uh, for the transportation installation phase the ocean data is, uh, are required to support the construction planning, real-time monitoring, forecast during construction. I, I, I separated this figure by the Kronos project because in our project, we use the integration, the RAGF radar, satellite data, and the in-situ data to integrate and assimilate in mathematical modeling in order to, to have a good forecast in terms of the uh, current and in the waves, of course, principle, okay? And this can support your transport and installation operation. All this item here, uh, we need to consider during this phase because that you have to need a good prediction for this kind of operation. Uh, in our case also, uh, we, we, we need to generate every day a, a good report, a, a good bulletins that can support all the procedure uh, in, in case of the, to have a, a safe condition to operate in each, uh, each region, okay? Uh, in our case, we have a wind forecast, wipe forecast, current forecast. Here is a very nice uh, picture uh, slide because you can see uh, when you have a combined, we need in this phase of your <coughs> offshore wind farm, we need to consider the, for example, the monitoring. We have to collect the real data, real time data, for example, almost or quasi real time data, and forecast, okay, because this increases the efficiency of the installation phase. In our, in our case here, I show the AGF radar uh, on left, and the uh, and the right, I have the mathematical modeling, ROMS, uh, Regional Ocean Modeling System. Then you can combine, you can uh, assimilate this data, of course, the data of measurement, and the mathematical model for improving, uh, improving this modeling 
you of course your prediction uh, it's the similar is a similar type of data uh, to the transport installation happening in operation man, in my my maintenance maintenance uh, phase of the your, your farm here is a, of course the same to continue of course you have to for example to to all the, all the schedule of maintenance the turbine, the substation, power cable, every item you need to consider, you need to have an excellent operation window. In that case here, I show the, the, the kind of product we provide by Kronos platform. And you have, for example, the data of the wave, uh, wave winds and the current, and depends on your kind of operation, I create a specific operation window for you for you for have a source for you during your operation. And the discommission is a, the last phase of your life cycle. Yeah? And in that case, it's the same you can use, for example, the same situation and the the uh, and the uh, operation maintenance is the same the same kind of data we need to use in this phase of this commission. Leaders, yeah? is this, this is famous system the people use along, around the world, okay? The leaders is the, the is very nice one. You can operate in the 10 to 2,000, <coughs> sorry, 200 meters, okay? You have this kind of sample rate, okay? And you have a range between one meters per second or eight meters per second. The accuracy is 0.1 meters per second. Of course, this is a kind of system we need to calibrate before you install. The same happened with the Leosphere wind, wind curve V2. This, this, uh, this two system domain of the world market in terms of the LIDAR. For monitoring system for wind, float leader well this float leader is very important system okay here and in this slide i can show many many uh, system yeah we have a, a different kind of system this system use the same the same uh, old system is use uh, share the same kind of uh, <coughs> lighter okay and if you look here here in the, in the table, the most of this system is stage two. Okay, here I have a picture from different kind of one. X flyer, wind sentinel. Uh, X flyer, X flyer also is a good one. A Fugger ocean uh, sea watch. In, in the case of ocean pact geo geo science, you use the always FLS two hundred. This. Uh, another kind of one, okay? This is the expertise area. The Ocean Pact Group today is, is ready to, to support different projects, different phases of the project I, 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 I mentioned before. In, in terms of the environment management and course consulting, develop of the environment studies, of course, and all phases, all phases, the implementation of the, the program, you can give this support for each one. And in, in the area of the geoscience, you have the geophysical, geotechnical, environmental, metocean, and surface and subsea position. And we have a, a fleet of the research vessel. This one, the ocean tower, is many winch, wayframe, position, everything you want to, 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 to have a good support. You have a CEO Johnson, is a research vessel, excellent one also, and they include the environmental area and the geotechnical area. Here, some geotechnical investigation, like a seabed sampling, in situ test, offshore soil lab, CPT, piston core, different size of piston core, vibro core, box core, you know, everything you want for geotechnical. <laughs> in terms of the geophysical investigation, my uh, multi beam is the, the main system uh, we have in the whole of of the uh, uh, ocean tower you have this system installed on the roof 
then you can operate all along all the Brazilian coast. <clears throat> you have a side scan sonar, deep tall, sub bottom profile, so seismic, uh, shallow seismic, a magnetometer, and a AUV like a Rugen 3000 meters. Uh, oceanographic mooring, lines, installation, metocean buoys, large inventory of oceanographic equipment in Latin America include gliders, is, is an autonom autonomous uh, system, <laughs> and the profilers, uh, wave tide current meteorologic parameters, uh, real time data uh, transmission, and house processing report. Uh, we have also logistics included the, 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 the big the big uh, offshore base in the uh, uh, sul port. This is a kind of the suite of the uh, Metocean monitoring uh, information. You have today I provided the monitoring by satellite, HVF radar, in situ data, is data by Kronos project. Here is a kind of uh, report, of course, generated. For example, graph, table, dashboard, customized for each client needs. And here, to, to, to reach in the, uh, we have a partnership of the Yellows, e Eolos uh, company, it's a Spain company. Uh, and in our case, we use the Eolos FL 200 uh, float leader buoy. Is a pass, uh, passing the test of the offshore wind accelerator, okay, and by part of the carbon trust, this uh, is, can give to us uh, the best, uh, you have the best technology for monitoring to collect wind data. This is a, a view of the system, it's a very cost effective, versatile, and energy autonomous and reliable. Uh, acquire the uh, 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 high label data, uh, easy transport to operation. And in our case uh, in Brazil, because we have all this infrastructure to support uh, the installation operation of the system, uh, the company we, we today we provide this kind of service in Brazil. This is a, a suite Carlos, of the. Carlos, one, one minute, please, to, to conclude. Okay. One minute, okay. It's a kind of day, the uh, uh, sensor you have on board of the system, the leader, the power system, you know, the mooring system installation deployment, data qualification of, of course. Conclusion, uh, <coughs> what happened in Europe and the US to learn the curve between bio and gas, EP air in Brazil, we will use to support offshore in project and this also reflect the environmental issues. And uh, information uh, with her <coughs> measurement generated by monomeric modeling techniques play a, uh, a key role in the phase of the life cycle of the offshore wind farm. And regarding offshore oceanography, the main variables in terrestrial installation construction of the farm. I talk about all this, all this variable. The ocean park who has a prepared has prepared itself over the last decade to, in, to, prove, to provide the offshore wind farm market with the best service in terms of metal sonographic, geophysical, geotechnical equipment, as well as research vessel ready to operate in our region of Brazil coast of offering, offering quality service and, of course, uh, quality health safety and body protocols. And, and finally, the Ocean Pact Group would be to emphasize that it has an unconditional commitment to ocean sustainability and the engagement to offer its best to the action of the United Nations Ocean Tech. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Carlos, for nice. for your nice presentation. It's uh, of course and quickly and the quick a quick quick one. Unfortunately, we would, yeah. it's an interesting subject that we would like to discuss for for a long time. And uh, of course, data gathering, uh, metocean and monitoring is, is crucial for all the phases you, you mentioned from planning to design to operation and maintenance 
so it's a very interesting presentation. I, I just one curiosity of mine, because we, we are ahead of time now. Uh, I, if I understood correctly, the instrumentation that you that you plan for wave monitoring, I mean, especially long term, because we need the long term wave monitoring also for fatigue analysis and statistics of uh, reliability of the equipment and so on. So it's based on uh, wave buoys more than, for example, radars or something like that. In fact, you can use both. You can use the buoy. You, you, you can install, for example, a um, uh, wave hider system that you can collect the data for a long time and transmit uh, by satellite, for example, is possible. Or is, uh, you can store it inside of the data log system, for example. Or you can use, for example, part of the fleet as a, a, a radar system that can collect the wave also, but during the short time period, not during the long time period, you know, the, because that nowadays we use the, uh, use the uh, wave watch tree for prediction, but you calibrate our, our modeling, use this kind of data because uh, uh, fortunately, our company has a different uh, system to the install in the Brazilian coast that you can calibrate and you can use it, for example, sync cost system that is, there are many uh, information today available if you want. But, but insight, insight measurements are always important even for, yeah, for calibrating the, the model, yeah. right? And yeah. Uh, especially now that seems uh, it seems that the the conditions are changing in the in the long term with this, with the climate change and so on definitely definitely yeah. it's, uh, we, we need to consider when you're planning each uh, offshore farm we need to consider the climate change definitely okay that uh, thank you carlos once again for your Welcome. nice presentation